Hi guys, this is Gold Shorter Gold TCG, and today I am going to be doing a set review video for Bandit Ring. Now, the reason I'm doing this now instead of when Ancient Origins is released in English sometime this August is for the simple reason that most of everything you see here will be in our English set, if not everything. Uh, undoubtedly, we will get a few extra cards when the English set releases from promos or maybe the Legendary Shine Collection, stuff like that. But for now, now that Bandit Ring is unveiled and we have all the cards here, including these three beautiful Secret Rare Full Arts, then, well, I just figured now would be a perfect time to just review the set, show what I think are going to be good playable cards, and cards that I think are basically going to dominate the next format. Now, I need to preface this by saying that I've never done anything like this before, so please bear with me if I stumble across my words a few times, or if maybe I start looking at a card, think that it's good, and then keep reading and realize, oh, it's not as good as I thought. But I've read through the whole list of cards here. I think I've got a pretty good idea of what's good, what's not. So um, let me start by saying that this set is really, really big. Uh, the full arts alone, there's 14 of them, and that's not even supporters. That's just 14 Pokemon, which means that there are 14 EXs in this set, and then 14 full arts. No, no, I'm sorry. 11 EXs, 14 full arts, including those three cards I just showed you, and then two gold secret rares, which I will get to later. So I'm just on Poke Beach here. I'm just going to start scrolling down <clears throat> and then start with this card right here. This Vile Plume has an ability called, as you can see over here, Frustrating Pollen. As long as this Pokemon is in play, both you and your opponent cannot play item cards. Now, this has been going all over the place as to whether people think it's going to be playable or not. I think it's going to be extremely playable, and I do think that people are going to be playing with it a lot. For the sole reason that no items for your opponent is huge right now. I mean, Seismitoad X is just dominating this format. Uh, it's hard to find a deck these days that either counters it or doesn't include it in some way. So, the fact that we now have a Pokemon that doesn't even require an, uh, an attack to start the item lock, that's huge. It's just an ability. Of course we had Garbodor before, but that required a tool. This doesn't require anything as long as this Vile Plume is in play. All items in play are shut off. Now Garbodor was abilities, I just realized. My apologies. Um, I was thinking Trevenant with the uh, ability, and then Gothitel before that. So now we have Frustrating Pollen on Vile Plume. The biggest downside, of course, is that you can't play items either. That is why people are saying maybe this isn't as playable as as we first thought. Because, well, if you can't play items, then that you're probably going to hurt yourself. But honestly, I think that people are going to find a way to make this work. Just turning off items is too big of a deal right now not to make it happen. We do have this Bell Awesome, which I apologize for the picture quality, but this is all Poke Beach gives us. Um, it does have one... Uh, for one Grass Energy, it has an attack called Wind Call. Does 20 damage and then switch this with one of your bench Pokemon. Nothing big. We've seen this before. Plenty of Pokemon have this. Um, but then it has Flower Mixer, which does 60. Move as many Grass Energy attached to your Pokemon to your other Pokemon in any way you like. Now, as soon as Verzi and Genesect is out of the format, we probably won't have many Grass-type decks around that revolve around grass. However, this is still big. You can just move your grass energy around as much as you want. I'm not, I'm, I just can't see Vileplume, or not Vileplume, Bell Awesome getting too much play, but I can see it having potential, especially maybe in the future if they do make another grass type EX that just starts to dominate the format. There's also other grass types in here that are just so good that I think that we might see some grass type decks coming out, especially since Seismitoad is still here and it's weak to grass. Um, I can see some grass type decks coming out as soon as this set is released, but we'll just have to see. For now, just remember that if you ever are in a situation where you can attach as many grass energy to one of your Pokemon as possible, then maybe you can promote this Blossom and use Flower Mixer. Not only does it deal 60, which with a Muscle Band would almost one-shot a Seismitoad, a Muscle Band and a Hypnotoxic Laser Verbank City Gem would do the trick, which is a lot, and, you know, half of that's rotating out. But the fact stands that um, Blossom can deal a ton of damage, and with the same attack, you can move your grass energy around however you want, which is really, really nice. We have this 
Ariados, which has the Poison Net ability. Once during your turn, you may use this ability. Both active Pokemon are now poisoned. Um, excluding Grass-type Pokemon. So if this thing is active, all of a sudden, well, you, you poison your opponent's active Pokemon as long as they're not Grass-type. And this thing cannot be poisoned with that ability. So, um, once again, hard to see this coming into play ever. Uh, maybe Sparkling Robe will become a thing. You know, the tool from a previous set, I think it was Furious Fist, don't quote me on that. You just attach it to your Pokemon, and as long as Sparkling Robe is on it, it cannot be touched by special conditions. Very similar to Verizian AX's um, Verdant Wind ability. Um, here, it's just an ability... You don't need to do anything to activate it except simply announce Poison Nest. And all of a sudden, both active Pokemon are now Poison. Once again, excluding Grass-type Pokemon, but that's, you know, th this could be used a little bit. It could be something like um, Zubat, Golbat, Crobat from Furious Fists, or or it, it was from Phantom Forces, my apologies. From Phantom Forces, where people were like, just dealing two damage counters or three damage counters isn't that big of a deal. And now, Bats is one of the biggest cards in the format. So, now we got this area dose, which can poison stuff on top of the Bats dealing damage. We might just see a Bats area dose combination sometime. We'll have to see. Uh, for now, just remember that that ability is there. These cards, the Sceptile EX and the Mega Sceptile EX, are getting a ton of hype, and I will explain why. I do think that the hype is real. I believe that is well-founded. Um, this is part of the reason why I'm not playing the game anymore, just because cards like this now exist. Um, Sleep Poison, for one energy, does 10 damage. Flip a coin if heads your opponent's active Pokemon is now asleep and poisoned. Sound familiar? That's right. This is basically Hypnotoxic Laser, except now the flip uh, is required for both sleep and poison instead of just sleep. So now, for one energy, that's that's just huge. And you deal an additional 10 damage on top of that. Now, you do have to flip the coin, of course, and Flip Teeny will be out of the format once this thing is introduced, but there's all sorts of things that can help with this. There's Trick Coin, which was released, I think, in Flashfire. It was in the XY series, so that is a thing. Um, Hypnotoxic Laser was just a huge card. It still is. It just defined the whole format. Everyone uh, who played in the format said it was just groundbreaking, it was extremely broken, and by broken, I don't mean that it didn't work well, on the contrary, it mean it worked too well. It, it just made it to the point where some people believe that they made Verizian EX just to give Dex a chance at working without being affected by special conditions. Now, we have Septile EX, which conveniently comes around right as Hypnotoxic Laser is taken out of format. This is not an item card, meaning if you're up against a Seismito, not only can you deal super effective damage against it, but you can still potentially put it to sleep and poison it instead of having to rely on an item. The downside is, of course, that it is an attack, not an item card, so you can't just, you know, play another one if you fail. You can't get it back out of the discard pile with Dowsing Machine and stuff like that. Once again, Dallas Machine will be out of format as well, so it doesn't matter. But the fact remains, it is an attack. You will waste your turn attacking. But it's basically the difference between, if you were around long enough, the difference between Sableye using Junk Hunt and the Junk Arm item card. And we saw how powerful Sableye's Junk Hunt attack became as soon as Junk Arm was taken out of the format. We also have this... Second attack, Assassin Claw, which deals 60, and then if your opponent's active Pokemon is affected by a special condition, it does 70 more. So assume you flipped heads the first time, and your opponent was unable to retreat or get rid of the special conditions. All of a sudden, now you're going to be dealing 130 damage to them for 2 energy, which is pretty darn huge. If it's a Seismitoad, they're dead. If, um, I mean, <laughs> it's hard to see a downside to this card. Of course, by the time you get to your second turn, almost always, you will want to have Mega Evolved, and that is where Mega Septile, this beautiful card, look at it, it comes in. Um, this is the first card that I've pulled up that has the Theta Stop Ancient Trait. Theta Stop says simply prevent all effects of your opponent's abilities 
done to this Pokemon. <laughs> so, any abilities on your opponent's side of the field cannot affect this. Any ability whatsoever. Having a hard time thinking of specific abilities that might affect this anyway, but just know that abilities do not affect this Pokemon, which is huge. That actually means that things like Golbat and Crobat with um, Sneaky Bite and Surprise Bite cannot touch this with their damage counters because Theta Stop prevents it, because that would be an ability. Um, that's just really, really huge. The Theta Ancient Traits from this set are going to really help define the format once again. So, Mega Septile EX has the Jagged Saber attack, as you can see right there in the art, which, I mean, once again, the art is beautiful. Jagged Saber deals 100 damage for 2 energy, and then you may attach up to 2 Grass Energy from your hand to your bench Pokemon in any way you like. If you do, remove all damage from each Pokemon you attach them to. Um, I'm having a hard time seeing this synergize with anything right now, but I haven't had much time to think about it, so just know that this thing exists, the pre-evolution exists. <clears throat> Honestly, I think that Sceptile EX is going to be a format definer. The, um, they obviously created this to counter Seismitoad. One attack from this thing knocks out Seismitoad EX as long as it's not weak to it. Uh, we might see the... Uh, <clears throat> there was a... I can't remember what it was. There was a uh, item card, I think, a tool that made it so that you had no weakness. I don't remember what it was. I mean, maybe we'll see something like Shadow Circle and Dark Energy on on Seismitoad a lot more. Even though Dark Rise is going out of format, I honestly think that Eveltal Seismitoad will still be a thing. So this won't one-shot that kind of Seismitoad, but still, it deals damage. The pre-evolution poisons and puts it to sleep we're going to be seeing a Sceptile Dex around a lot, I think. Enough of that, let's continue on. I've been going for a little while already, so let's just keep going. To the next big thing, this Vespiqueen card, which I'm sorry that I can't zoom in anymore. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, we have the first attack. Information control does 10 damage. You may draw cards from your deck until there are 6 cards in your hand. That's not a bad thing by any means. Uh, we have Shaman EX, which does the same thing with an ability, so... I mean, Shaman, Ability, this, Wasting Your Turn to Attack, kind of a no-brainer which one most people will go for. But the second attack is what people are really interested in. B Revenge does 20 and then 10 more damage for each Pokemon in your discard pile. This is literally Flareon's Vengeance attack. Quite literally. It takes two colorless, does 20 base, and then an extra 10 for each Pokemon in discard pile. It's Flareon all over again. The absolutely only differences between Flareon and this card is that this has that first attack, which lets you draw until you have six in your hand. It has ten less HP, so it's a little more susceptible to getting knocked out a little faster than Flareon was. And it's a grass type. Once again, that would really, really hurt Seismitoad. Um, it's weak to fire. So if there are fire decks coming around, excuse me, if there are fire decks coming around, then this might face some problems, but... Flareon's getting rotated out. We have an immediate replacement. People are going to be using this card a lot, so be on the lookout for that. Vengeance is going to be a thing. Um, once again, and it'll be called Be Revenge. So, we have this Vespa Queen with another Theta Ancient Trait, Theta Double. You may have up to two Pokemon cards attached to it. It's uh, We've had a card like this before. We had Sigilith with the Toolbox ability. Um... I believe it was called Toolbox, where you could have up to four tools attached to it. This is an ancient trait, which means there's absolutely no way to shut off. At any point, it can have up to two tools attached to it. Um, B Grain does 20 and then heal damage from this Pokemon equal damage done from de defending Pokemon. So if it has 20 on it, you can just take that off. If you have 80 on it, you're down to 60. It's not that big of a deal. Fury Swipes does 30. Flip three coins, it does 30 damage times the number of heads. So it could potentially do 90. Um, if you flip three heads, that does one-shot a Seismitoad with weakness. Um, well, who knows what we'll do with this. I mean, you could have two muscle bands attached to this, so all of a sudden you're doing, uh, if you only flip one heads, that would only do 30, but then you're doing an extra 40, so now all of a sudden it's doing 70. Um, you can have maybe, I, I, I don't know, you can have two tools of any kind attached to this, so 
it'll be fun to see what tools people put on this Vespa Queen, but honestly, I think that the Ancient Trade is the only thing it has going for it, to be absolutely frank. I do think that this Vespa Queen, the one with B Vengeance, is going to be the one people use more. The final grass type is well, one of my favorite Pokemon from Generation 5, uh, Verizian. That's how it's pronounced. I really want to call it Verizian, but it's pronounced Verizian. Ew. So, it has an attack called Rescue. It deals no damage, search your discard file for two Pokemon, show them to your opponent, and put them into your hand. This could be really great for if you're playing, say, a Rayquaza deck, and you discarded a few Shamans because your Skyfield got knocked out of play. Now you can get them back. Um, I, I do believe that Sacred Ash is a bit more consistent card for that. It's an item, so you don't have to waste your turn attacking, but just know this does exist. Um, you can get it, you can get just any Pokemon you want with this Verizian, which might help in the long run. And then it has prize counter, it does 40, and then if you have more prize cards than your opponent, it does 80 more damage. That does 120, and if you're up against a Seismitoad deck, once again, it's a knockout against a Seismitoad that is weak to grass. So, that's not bad, considering it only takes two grass energy. You could power it up with the Mega Sceptile EX, which you can attach two grass energy from your bench from your hand to two bench Pokemon in any way you like, all of a sudden you can just charge up this Verizon in one turn. You could put two on this, you can put one on this and one on something else, doesn't matter, any way you like. So it'll be fun to see how much Verizon is actually used. Now we get to the fire Pokemon, which um, we're starting with this Flareon with an ability called Flare Effect. And all the evolutions in the set have similar abilities. As long as this Pokemon is in play, all of your Stage 1 Pokemon are fire as well as their original type. Now, let's say you have this Vespa Queen. All of a sudden, it is grass and fire. And it doesn't have the side effects of being weak to water either. It's still only weak to fire. But it itself is fire. So if you do vi um, the equivalent of Vengeance, if you do Beaver Revenge against, say, a Grass type that is weak to fire, all of a sudden it's actually weak to Vespa Queen's attack as long as this Flareon is on your bench. That could really come into play. We've seen stuff like this in the past. Didn't see too much play, but it's going to be interesting to see how this happens how this works out in the future. It really does look like Pokemon's trying to give stave, Stage 1's a really good chance at combating these big EXs, and so far it looks like they're doing a good job. Um, the ability is the big thing to be on the lookout for. The uh, only other thing this Flareon has going for it is Heat Breath, to 60, flip a coin, if has it does 20 more. Not that good. You really just want it for the ability to sit on your bench and look pretty. Uh, we have this Entei, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, with Burning Scent Attack, discard the top four cards of your deck. If any of them were Fire Energy, attach them to your Pokemon in any way you like. Is basically what it comes down to. Um, it might be good for powering up Fire decks of some kind. Maybe, I have no idea, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how this works. Honestly, I don't think that's too good. And then Combat Blaze does 20, and then 20 more for each of your opponent's benched Pokemon. That might potentially be good, especially if you're up against, say, a Rayquaza deck where there's eight Pokemon on the bench. So this does 20 plus another 160. 20 for each of those bench Pokemon, which is, of course, 180. Not enough to knock out the Rayquaza EX itself, but it's enough to, or, or rather the Mega Rayquaza, but it's enough to knock out the smaller Rayquaza easily, a Shaman, stuff like that. So this Entei might be potentially good. It does take two Fire Energy, but... Well, who knows? Then we have this Ancient Trait Entei with the Theta Double. Once again, you can have two Pokemon Jewels attached to it. Flame Barrier does 30, and then during opponent's next turn, reduce all damage done to this Pokemon by your opponent's attacks by 30. So if you were going to be hit by 60 before, now it'll only hit you for 30. It is weak to water, so Seismitoad will still be a thing. Basically, it comes down to most of this set is either going to wreck Seismitoad or you got to think about how it's going to handle itself against Seismitoad being the threat that it is. It really is, it should tell you how big of a card Seismitoad is if it was three sets back, four sets back almost, and it's still that big of a deal to worry about it. Then Heat Tackle does 130, flip a coin if Tails' is t Pokemon does 30 damage to itself. Not that big of a deal. But once again, you can attach two Muscle Bands and all of a sudden you're doing 170 instead of 130. Uh, we'll just have to see how much this intake 
um, how much work it can put in, but we'll have to see. Um, we do have this Hollow Volcarona with the Sunbath attack. Search your deck for a basic Pokemon, put it on your bench, then attach up to two basic energy cards from your deck to that Pokemon. Um, since it's an attack, I really don't know if it's going to be played that much, but we will see. Um, the good thing is if it's like a, a, a basic Pokemon that doesn't have a way to evolve immediately, that's an easy way to put it on your bench, and then if you have the evolution in your hand, just play it from your hand next turn. Uh, but we'll get to how that might backfire in the future. This could really potentially set things up very quickly. Thing is, you need to set up Volcarona quickly. It does require the fact that you have to evolve from Laravesto, which wastes a turn. You have to um, you have to attach the energy. You have to attack, and this thing's weak to water. Uh, Seismito with Muscle Band will just knock it out. But just know that that is there, and that could be huge. Maybe not right now, but maybe there's something in the future that'll come out that'll just make it happen way faster. Maybe the breaking evolution mechanic from the next set, we'll see. Then Flamethrower does 60, discard an energy attached to this Pokemon. That's not what you want. You just want it for that Sunbath attack. We have this Volcarona with the Theta Stop ability, prevent all effects of your opponent's Pokemon's abilities done to this Pokemon. Already discussed that. Burning Scale does 20, flip two coins, and then it does 20 more for each head. It's not that good. Veil Wind does 80, and your opponent switches to defending Pokemon with one of his or her bench Pokemon. It's... We've seen cards like this before. They've never been too good, but now that we're at the point where we're not seeing too many Lysanders anymore, most, pe most people are building their decks just saying, okay, maybe one or two Lysanders in the deck. Um, I myself have played entire games where there wasn't a single Lysander. They were just focused on leaving something active, setting stuff up on the bench, using the active Pokemon as much as possible until it was knocked out, then switching back. Stuff like that. So now we have a, we have this, which people might take advantage of, because you can just uh, you can maybe bring up something that has no energy but a high retreat cost and leave them there. Floatstone will be out of format after this card is released, so we'll have to see how much this card gets used. Honestly, on a scale of 110, I think its playability is like 2. It's better than Pokemon that only deal 10 damage and nothing else, but it's not as good as other Pokemon that I've reviewed so far. Uh, I just want to, I just want to point out this Magikarp with uh, the amazing Splash Attack. Does thirty flip two coins of either's tails? This attack does nothing. That is all. Um, let's see. This Gyarados, people have been, <clears throat> well, I mean the art is fantastic. It is a large art with the faded double ancient trait. We you have two Pokemon. Pokemon tools attached to it. Counter attack does 30 times the number of damage counters on all of your benched Magikarp. Not that good considering that Magikarp, that's the other Gyarados, not con uh, considering Magikarp only has 30 HP as you can see there. So if you have four Magikarp on the bench and each of them has two damage counters on them, then you're only going to be doing, well, I mean, you will be doing a lot. 30 times 8 is, you know, 240 damage, but setting it up would just take way too long. It's more like a bad deck Monday idea. And then Thrash, 100, flip a coin, if Tails it does 30 more damage, I'm sorry, if Heads it does 30 more, if Tails it does 30 do itself. Now, once again, we can attach Pokemon tools where, you know, we can get multiple muscle bands on this, we can do all sorts of fun things. Maybe the, uh, oh man, I forgot what it was called. The tool that makes it so that you cannot damage yourself. Maybe one of those and a muscle band to do a lot of damage. That would be that would be pretty cool. We'll have to see how much this Gyarados is used, but I'm, I think it's more like a three on that same scale that I just used. Okay, now we got Vaporeon, which I think is just beautiful art. I wish they had a bigger picture of it, but that is just gorgeous. This might be my favorite common card from the set. It has the Aqua Effect ability. As long as this Pokemon is in play, all of your Stage 1 Pokemon are Water type, as well as their original type. It's the same as Flareon, except now you add Water to that. So if anything is weak to Water, now your Stage 1s can hit that for super effective damage. Once again, we'll see how much this is used, but it has a lot of potential. Then Hydro Splash, 3 energy, does 70, nothing special. You just want it for the ability. Uh, the next one that comes to here, to my mind, is this Regice. Um, they never did make a Regice EX, so they're going to make up for it by giving us a somewhat playable 
just regular reg ice, <clears throat> which will probably be a non hollow or rare in English. Ice Beam does 30. Flip a coin. If heads, your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. Unless they're wearing a sparkling robe or run a full heal on their deck there's or, or Pokemon Center Lady, there's no way to get out of paralysis right now after this card is released. So that would be pretty cool to, to run this and just paralyze your opponent's Pokemon over and over and over again, leaving them not able to do anything. And then Resistance Blizzard to 70. During your opponent's next turn, prevent all effects of attack, including damage done to these Pokemon by your opponent's Pokemon EX. I don't know if you guys noticed, but Pokemon EX are extremely huge right now. We've had, basically, ever since the EX's return, the format has just been dominated by EX's. As long as this thing just keeps using Resistance Blizzard, it cannot be touched by EX's. So we're going to see how much play this gets. It might be that we're finally seeing a trend where there might be entire decks where EX's are not the main attacker. We'll see. <clears throat> For now, this definitely helps that make a possibility. Because as EX's can't touch it. It's basically the same as the safeguard ability, except it is an attack. It requires 3 energy. But it also deals 70 damage, which is nice. So we'll have to see how much that works. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> So now we have this QRAM EX. That's how it's pronounced. QRAM. Don't question me. That is just how it's pronounced. So we have the Frozen World attack. This attack does 30 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon. Don't apply weakness resistance to British Pokemon. It's basically the same as the old school Glaciate from one of the first QRAMs ever printed. Um, and then we have... Ice Calibur does 130, discard one energy attached to this Pokemon during your opponent's next turn. The defending Pokemon cannot attack. 130, I mean, that doesn't one-shot a lot of things. It does one-shot a few things, like Shaman, but uh, more than likely your opponent will not leave a Shaman active if they can help it, or many things. It will knock out most non-EXs, though, so that's something to think about. And even if it doesn't, you do have to discard the energy, but the bright side is your opponent cannot attack. They can always just retreat out of it, or switch out of it, or something like that, but if they have to stay active, they just cannot attack. It's not only that they cannot attack this Pokemon, even if they Lysander something else out, they cannot attack that. That could be huge. For now, I just think the energy cost is too high. The art is a lot better than I was expecting, considering this is like our fourth or fifth Cure MEX. Let's be serious, they gotta stop with that. But, you know, this does have potential. We'll have to see how much play it gets. We have the Jolteon with Electric Effect. You can probably guess what it is. Stage 1s have Lightning as well as Original Type. Thunder Blast does 80 damage and discard an energy attached to this Pokemon. Once again, you want it for the ability, not the attack, but man, that art is beautiful. We're getting to more EXs, and oh my goodness, I am go I'm taking my sweet time with this. I don't know how long I've been going. My apologies. Um, we got Ampharos EX with Thunder Rod. Look at the top four cards of your deck. You may attach as many lightning energy as you find there and attach it to this Pokemon. Shuffle the remaining cards back into your deck. That could be pretty good because um, its second attack and Mega Ampharos' attack both require four energy apiece. So if you can accelerate the energy, that would be great. We'll have to see how much play this gets. But for now, that's not bad. Sparkling Tail, its second attack does 100, and it's not affected by weakness, resistance, or any other effect. Basically, it does exactly 100 plus Muscle Band, is basically what it comes down to. Mega Ampharos, though, has this Exavolt attack, as you can see right there in the beautiful writing. It looks fabulous. Anyway, it does 120 damage. You may make this attack do 50 more damage, and your opponent's Pokemon is now paralyzed. If you do, this Pokemon does 30 to itself. So, you could potentially do 170 to your opponent and make it paralyzed if that doesn't knock it out. Most EXs now have 170 damage. If they don't, there's stuff like Rayquaza EX, which is weak to lightning. Of course, the Altaria card that people like to run with that does negate the weakness, but still, if it is weak, that'll knock it out. If it is not weak, you're going to paralyze it. Um, the uh, downside is you do 30 damage to yourself, and this Pokemon does have 220 HP, so that would put you down to 190, which is actually almost within range for a lot of things to knock it out. But still, that could be potentially good. There's really no other lightning acceleration right now outside of using regular Ampharos' EXs 
and Ferozi Hex is man. Um, Thunder Rod attack, but we'll have to see. Um, let's see, this Rotom basically has um, an attack identical to Hooligans, Gem, and Cast from last uh, from Dark Explorers. Flip three coins for each head, choose a card from your opponent's hand without looking and have your opponent shuffle it back into his or her deck. I don't think it's going to be good, but it's worth pointing out that that exists. This unknown has the last will ability. Once during your turn, if this Pokemon is on your bench, you may discard this Pokemon and all cards attached to it. This doesn't count as a knocked out Pokemon, then draw a card. That is a great way to draw cards. You just put it on your bench, discard it, draw a card. Perfect. And it puts a, a, another Pokemon in your discard pile for something like the Revenge from Vespa Queen. Not a bad Pokemon card at all. Hidden Power just does 10, nothing special. You just want it for its ability once again. I can definitely see this being played a lot in cards that rely on Pokemon or cards in general just being in the discard pile. So be on the lookout for this and stuff like that. Um, next thing that sticks out to me is this Theta Stop uh, Ancient Trait Baltoy. Um, of course, abilities can't touch it. Um, future spin, look at the top three cards of your opponent's deck, then put them back on top in any order. That's not bad at all. Um, if your opponent is dead drawing, you can make sure they continue to dead draw. That's just, that's just a really fun deck idea. Um, we had something like this where, uh, from Flashfire with, uh, was it Love Disc or something like that? <clears throat> and so it'll be really fun to see how that works. Uh, the next Pokemon card that really sticks out to me is this Golurk with the Fate of Stop ability, same, or not, a ancient trait, not ability, same thing. Um, it has an ability, though, called Double Type. As long as this Pokemon is in play, it is both a Psychic and a Fighting type, which is really, really cool. So, if, and it's a Stage 1, so you can combine this with all those evolutions, and all of a sudden... You have this thing which can pretty much hit super effective damage for almost everything, which would be really, really cool. Except for the fact that it requires 4 energy to do 80, and you may do 40 more damage, and it does 20 to itself. So you may potentially do 120 with weakness that will knock out everything in format. However, <laughs> however, we'll just have to see how much this gets played considering it takes 4 energy. But just know that this does exist. You can, I mean, you can use your own abilities on it, but not your opponent's abilities. So you can use the Eevee Lucian's abilities, but if your opponent has, um, actually I wonder if the Eevee Lucian's um, on one of your opponent's Pokemon, and it makes it like a dark type, but, but I guess there's not an Umbreon, so there's no reason to even think about that, huh? Anyway, so we'll, we'll just leave it at that. Just know that this does exist. Maybe not good right now, but we'll see. We have this thing which goes by the name of Hoopa EX. It has an ability called Bandit Ring, which, as you know, is the name of the set in Japanese. Once during your turn, when you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, you may use this ability. Search your deck for up to three Pokemon EX, excluding Hoopa. Show them to your opponent, put them in your hand, shuffle your deck afterwards. Put this on your bench, you get a free three Pokemon out of your deck. You can combine this with a Rayquaza deck to get two Rayquazas and a Shaman to draw cards. It, you can use this with that Sceptile deck to get Sceptiles. You can use it with Ampharos. You can use this to get three Seismento DX. You can use it to get any EXs you want except for more Hoopa, which would be really, really broken, so I'm glad they at least nerfed it a little bit. Then its attack is Hyperspace Fury. requires three Psychic Energy. Discard two Energy attached to this Pokemon. Choose one of your opponent's Pokemon. Does 100 damage to that Pokemon. It's not that big of a deal. You want it for the ability, and the ability will be used a lot. I guarantee it. We have Machamp EX, <clears throat> which actually has relatively good art. I'm a bit surprised. I'm a little disappointed because we just had a fighting type set like three or four sets ago, but whatever. Um, Thrash does 20 times the number of damage counters on this Pokemon, and this Pokemon is now confused. So if you have uh, if, if you have 10 damage counters on it, then it does 200 damage. The downside is you're confused, um, plus it's weak to Psychic, and maybe you might be hit by a Psychic-type move, you won't be able to live it, but just know that that attack does exist. And then Crazy Hammer does 80, 
And if it's affected by a special condition, it does 80 more damage than remove all special conditions. So maybe you'll want to confuse yourself or something like that because then you'll be able to deal more damage potentially. Of course, you'd still have to flip heads and all that fun stuff, but still just know that then you would also get your special conditions off, combine this with a muscle band, and that'll knock out most things in the form. Uh, we have to go down a lot here for me to get to the next Pokemon that I thought was good. Uh, and that would be the Tyranitar EX. I mean, just look at that art. I know that Jordan Japan's favorite Pokemon is Tyranitar, so I hope he's watching this. <laughs> because we got a Tyranitar EX for you. Anyway, we have Head Smash to 60, not that big of a deal. Ground Baked is 130 and then 10 to each of your bench Pokemon. Not that good. But then we have Mega Tyranitar EX, which has the attack Destroyer King. On top of the Faded Double uh, Ancient trait to, to Pokemon tools. We've been over this. Now, Destroyer King does 110 and then 60 for each damage counter on your opponent's active Pokemon. So you'll want to obviously hit it a little bit before using this, but this does exist and it has 240 HP. The second most of any Pokemon now in format after Wailord EX, which no one uses. So this thing will be a big pain to knock out. It is weak to fighting, which hurts. Has four retreat costs, which also hurts, but just know that this thing could potentially hit for a lot of damage. And you could power it up with the Veltal on uh, <clears throat> from Black and White Base. We have this Sableye. It's just a common card, but it has Captivating Eye. Choose a supporter card in your opponent's discard pile and use its effect as the effect of this attack. So if your opponent has a Professor Sycamore, you can use that. If it has, if they have a uh, I don't know, Lysander, then you can Lysander up one of their Pokemon, something like that. So it'll be interesting to see how much people use that. And then Silent Placement just puts three damage counters on your opponent's active Pokemon, not big of a deal. But Captivating Eye, we'll have to see how much that is used. My guess is not too much, but we never know. The next card that really sticks out to me is this Metagross um, Hollow. It has the ability Matt. Magnet Warp. Once during your turn, you may switch your active Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. Then your opponent switches their active Pokemon with one of their bench Pokemon. It's basically Escape Rope, but you get to, to pick your Pokemon first instead of your opponent. That's basically it. So it'll be fun to see how much this is used, and it doesn't have to be placed from your hand or anything. As long as it's on your bench, you just have to announce Magnet Warp, or even if it's active. Um, as long as it's in play, you can just announce Magnet Warp, switch your Pokemon, then your opponent switches theirs. Iron Cannon does 80. You may discard all metal energy attached, and if it, if you do, it does 80 more. Not that big, of, not that good of an attack because it takes four, and you don't want to power, uh, and you don't want to put them all in discard pile immediately. Just know that this exists. I can definitely see this maybe getting a 1-1-1 one, one, one line in a uh, Aegis Slash Dialga deck, but we'll have to see. Uh, we have this Metagross with the Theta double. Of Ancient Trait. Machine Gun Stamp does 20 and then 10 more damage for each card in your hand. This could be pretty big because if you guys didn't notice, we have... Um, actually, wait. I'm, I apologize. Cole Rest is getting rotated out. If Cole Rest wasn't getting rotated out, this could do a lot. Um, if you were to be able to Cole Rest for 16, then you'd be able to do 20 plus 160, so that would be 180 for 2 energy. That would be good. But Coress is getting rotated out, so that actually won't be that good of a card anymore. I'm not sure how, how much the max number of cards you can have in your hand is, but it's not 16 anymore. And then Guard Press does 80 during opponent's next turn. Damage done as Pokemon by attacks is reduced by 20. Not that good of a card after all, so my apologies. <laughs> um, let's see, the next one is this... Gardevoir, which has absolutely beautiful art. I can't wait to get my hands on one of these in English. Once during your... Oh, it has the uh, Bright Heal ability. Once during your turn, you may heal 20 damage to reach your Pokemon. Um, we have Fresh Water Set, which Ray does this, but it's nice to see this be an ability instead of an item, which can be shut off by Seismitoad. Then Telekinesis. Choose one of your opponent's Pokemon. Do 50 damage to it. This attacks damage isn't affected by weakness or resistance. Not that big of a deal, but we do have the ability, and the art is just fabulous. So, let's see. We do have this Whimsicott with the Win Mischief attack. Choose one of your bench Pokemon. Move all damage counters on that Pokemon to your opponent's active Pokemon. That might potentially be good if you're 
opponent's active has 50 damage left, uh, and you have a random Pokemon on the bench with 50 or more damage counters, then you can just move it to your opponent's active Pokemon, knock it out, and heal yourself of all that damage, which would be really, really cool. Um, I'm interested to see if they make an official ruling as to whether, um, like, in that case, maybe have 60 on the bench, but your opponent's active Pokemon only has 50 left. I wonder if you can actually move all of those, or if it has to be exact damage. We'll have to see what they have to say about that. Um, in which case, you would leave... Um, 10 on your, even though it does say all damage counters, I'm wondering if it would be like all damage counters possible or something like that. <clears throat> we have this Giratina EX in origin form, which looks beautiful. It has the rebellious wave ability, prevent all dam prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon by your opponent's mega evolved Pokemon. So this cannot be touched by this Sceptile EX we looked at earlier. Cannot be touched by the Seismitoad, although your item lock would still be in place because it is only for this Pokemon, not you in general. Um, Chaos Veil does 100. It does require a lot of things, but we have Double Dragon Energy, stuff like that. During your opponent's next turn, he or she can't play any Pokemon Tool, Special Energy, or Stadium cards from his or her hand. This could be pretty darn big, just for the fact that uh, when you take away items with that Vile Plume, all you basically have left our special energy or stadium basically all your pokemon would be, all your opponent would be able to do if they're hit by this attack is use abilities retreat attack attach basic energy and that would basically be it which would be absolutely huge so i can definitely see a uh, giratina vile plume deck come into play we'll have to see we have this gumi with the dilution ability when you attach a water energy from your hand to this Pokemon, you may use this ability, search your deck for a Gumi, put it onto your bench. Not that big of a deal, but it does help to eventually get out this Gudra, which has beautiful art. I wish they had a better, a clearer picture of it, but oh well. Liquid Blow, choose one of your opponent's Pokemon. This stack does 20 damage to that Pokemon for each energy in its retreat cost. So if it has a 4 retreat cost, you would be doing 80 damage to it, which would be really, really cool. Shining Breath does 110. During opponent's next turn, this Pokemon cannot be affected by special conditions. They're really making it so that special conditions just don't apply anymore. But uh, it's it has potential, but we'll have to see exactly how much it's used. My guess is not too much, to be frank. We have this Eevee, which you kind of need to evolve into the Eevee Lucians. No big deal. And then we have this Porygon Z right here. Um, its first attack, Cyber Crush, discard all special energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. That could be huge for things like, especially fighting decks, which revolve around strong energy, stuff like that. It'd also be good against the decks that need double colorless energy. It would be really, really good. Uh, its second attack, Slow Beam, 70 plus, um, your opponent... It does 70 during your opponent's next turn, the defending Pokemon's attacks costs another colorless to use. So it's basically the same as throwing a head ringer on there for another turn. And it's for all Pokemon, not just DXs. Then we have the large art Porygon Z, which has the Theta Stop ability. It has Digital Reboot. Choose any number of evolved Pokemon on your bench. You may remove as many evolution cards from those Pokemon as you like, put them back in your hands. Hard to see how this would work for now. Maybe it could be combined with Golbat and Crobat to pick them up and then you can use them again later without needing your super scoop up, stuff like that. We'll have to see. Screen resolution 50, your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. Uh, I think that if people use this, they'll use it just for digital reboot and it'll only be a one of. And this is the last Pokemon card. Lugia EX, which actually has pretty cool art. It has the arrow ball attack. Does 20 times number of energy attached to this Pokemon and the defending Pokemon. It's Mewtwo. It's exactly the same as Mewtwo EX. Absolutely no difference except that this thing isn't weak to Psychic and it's a colorless. They won't let it die. <laughs> okay, Deep Hurricane does 80, and if there's a stadium in play, it does 70 more damage and discard that stadium. It's similar to Donphan. Um, it does require 4 energy. Um, not that big of a deal. We'll, we'll see how much this gets played. I can definitely see it being like a one-of index to replace Mewtwo EX, but we'll see. And now we get to the trainers, and not a moment too soon because my voice is going out. We have Eco Arm. Shuffle three Pokemon tools from your discard pile back into your deck. This could be good for, for, for preventing yourself from decking out. could be good for all those, say, to double Pokemon that require so many tools. Once they're knocked out, you can just put them back into your deck. We'll see how much that is used. We have this Platoon Roller. 
uh, paint roller, but whatever. Discard a stadium card in play, then draw one card. We'll see how much this is used. I can't see it being used too much. Level Ball is being reprinted. Search your deck for a Pokemon with 90 HP or less. Put it into your hand, shuffle your deck afterward. This card was huge back when it was in format. People used it to get things like Emolga. They used it to get things that evolved into higher level things. They used it for electric decks. Now we have Pokemon with 90 HP or less like that Vespa Queen with the Bee's Revenge. So it'll be fun to see how many decks use this level ball now. Which means you can also use the older version of level ball. No reason to get rid of it, right? <clears throat> we have this Lucky Helmet Pokemon tool. When this Pokemon, when the Pokemon this card is attached to is your active Pokemon and is damaged by an opponent's attack, draw two cards. That could be really, really good because it gives you draw support. You'd have to think about whether you'll deck yourself out or not, but it's something. We have a few Spirit Links. We have the Sceptile Spirit Link. We have the Ampharos Spirit Link, and all of you guys know what the Spirit Links do. They allow you to Mega Evolve without losing your turn. We have the Tyranitar Spirit Link. Now we have this, which I think is probably the most powerful card in this entire set, believe it or not. Ace Trainer. Both players shuffle their hands into their deck, then draw six cards, and your opponent draws three. This is going to replace the four of N in every single deck. It's like N, except even better. It disrupts your opponent's hand and gives them even fewer cards to work with, and it always guarantees that you yourself have six. It's like they're begging me to not play this game anymore. It's just not going to be fun. This card is powerful. And I'm so very disappointed they didn't make a full art of it. We have the Hex Maniac. Until the end of your opponent's next turn, each Pokemon in play in each player's hand and each player's discard pile has no abilities. It's basically like Garbodor's Garbotoxin, except it's a supporter. We'll have to see how that works. Uh, we'll have to see how much it's played. I could see it maybe being a one of, but we'll see. Color Drain City Stadium. Between turns, place two damage counters on each Mega Evolve Pokemon in play. This could really um, counter those Rayquaza decks or its Sceptile or whatever Mega Evolution decks there are. Um, we'll have to see how much is played again. Um, since Verbeck City Gym is being rotated out, it'll be very interesting to see if maybe people start playing this, especially if they don't, themselves don't have Mega Evolve Pokemon. We have the Giant Forest, Giant Plant Forest Stadium. Each player's grass Pokemon can evolve during the first turn and on the turn they were put into play. So for that Vespa Queen, hey, if you go second, you could potentially, you know, use Bee's Vengeance for a knockout on your very first turn. That would be cool. I can see this being used a ton. Be on the lookout for this one, folks. Now we have the uh, Flash Energy. Can only be attached to Lightning Energy. And the Pokemon this energy is attached to has no weakness. So Ampharos cannot be touched by fighting Pokemon, stuff like that. I can see that being used a lot. And we have the Bad Energy. I'll be interesting to, it'll be interesting to see how much this, or what the English name is. <laughs> We will see. It can only be attached to Darkness Pokemon. When the Pokemon this card is attached to is your active Pokemon and is damaged by an opposed attack, put Doom and Damage counters on the attacking Pokemon EX. <clears throat> so if this is attached to Dark Pokemon and is attacked by an EX, that EX that attacks has to take two damage. I don't know if this will be used too much, but it'll be interesting to see. And then we have all the beautiful full arts, which I'm just going to let you go and check out yourself. Personally, my favorite card of this entire set is this. Full Art Mega Ampharos. The art is just that pretty. I'll let you go and check out all the rest of the art yourself, although this Lugia is very beautiful as well. It's all on Poke Beach. Just go right on ahead. And then we have something here, which I, of course, showed off at the beginning of this video. We have the Primal Kyogre, Primal Groudon, and Mega Rayquaza Full Art Secret Rare Shinies. They all work the same as before, except now they have the different Theta abilities, or, or Ancient Traits, rather. These two, or, or they all have the same Ancient Trait, and they are exclusive to this trio. It's Theta Max. When one of your po Pokemon becomes this Pokemon, heal all damage from it. I'm glad they did that. Because now this, like, Rayquaza, which would have been worth a lot, is now not worth as much. Because now it doesn't have the Delta Evolution Ancient Trait, which means you cannot evolve it first turn or on the turn you put down your Rayquaza. 
Now, at best, you can just heal all the damage from it. It still has the Emerald Break attack. Everything about it's the same except the Ancient Trait. I'm glad because that'll lower the price a little bit because that means it's not as playable. For Groudon and for Kyogre, I'm not sure it'll matter as much. Probably, but I'm not sure. And then we just have two gold cards from the set. We have the gold energy retrieval. Choose two energy cards from your discard pile. Put them in your hand. And then the gold trainer's mail. Look at the top four cards of your deck. Choose a trainer there and put it in your hand. Shuffle your deck afterward. So, yeah, that basically does it for the review of Bandit Ring. I hope you all enjoyed it. I know this video was long, but there's a lot of cards to discuss here. You probably noticed I probably only glanced over maybe a dozen or less cards that I didn't actually talk about. So I'm planning on doing this with every single set. If you actually got all the way to the end, then put hashtag Theta Stop. Uh, um, theta, actually, no, not hashtag Theta Stop. You probably can't um, pronounce that. Or, or you probably can't put this little symbol here. Instead, how about do hashtag Max, like Theta Max for the um, shiny Pokemon at the bottom. So anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative to you guys. If there was anything you thought I missed, then please let me know in the comments. And I think I'm done. My voice is gone. I need to go get a drink of water. Thanks everyone for watching, and stay tuned for more.